as a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty. You want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. We have an important returning guest today, Bill Murphy, one of the co-founders of GATA.org, the Gold Antitrust Action Committee. He's one of the good guys in that he and his GATA.org companions have been out investigating, exposing, and and prosecuting uh, manipulation and illegal action in the gold and silver markets. And uh, we're just grateful to have Bill back again here on Reluctant Preppers. Bill, thanks for joining us. Don again, thanks for having me anytime. We wanted to follow up with you. Uh, it's been a, a several months since we had you on here. And in that time, we've seen, uh, if we could start out with some recent market action and gold and silver markets and then turn to some more uh, overarching trends and principles uh, that, that aren't just uh, the, the daily action, but, but where we're headed. Um, first of all, on recent gold and silver price action, we've seen two fairly dramatic breakout attempts by uh, gold and silver over the past uh, couple of quarters. Uh, they were strongly up in the last couple of quarters and then both times uh, dropped back down again, but seems to be uh, a new signs of life than, than compared to what's been showing uh, for, for some time previously. And Mike Maloney, for one, uh, from goldsilver.com is forecasting that we're in the middle of another further retest of a bottom in Q2 before uh, a relaunch to new highs uh, would happen uh, after that. What, what do you see happening in, in the gold and silver markets that might give some people some insight uh, from your research perspective? Well, first of all, Mike's a very smart guy, so I always have to listen to what he has to say. But uh, And clearly, the gold cartels, we call them, which is the bullion banks, the U.S. government and other central banks, the BAS, they're still out there doing the same things they've been doing for 18 years, 28 years, whatever you want, and uh, are doing all they can to keep the prices of gold and silver down, go down, going down. And every time we think that we, we hope they're going to let up, they come right back. And uh, it's... Uh, quite tedious, to put it mildly. I mean, I'm, you know, obviously uh, I'm bullish because we're at artificially low prices. They're ridiculous. Uh, here to have $17 silver in 2017 and have gold to be going down five and a half years and, you know, $700 off its highs and what other assets are all making highs. And it's just, it's very, uh, it's very frustrating. And what that's what we do. And it's going to lead to historic markets on the upside, so it's it's a good reason for people to hang in there. If we could uh, turn our attention to uh, aspects that may change in this game because of the new Trump administration, first of all, one of the main, uh, you've been a vigilante uh, in the sense of getting the word out there for years now on the actual realities and facts around manipulation and illegal price suppression and lack of enforcement by the COMEX and others. Um, and so could you talk to us a little bit about, do you see the landscape changing as far as the enforcement uh, that we will or will not, we can look forward to with the new administration uh, to, to combat this price manipulation? I doubt it. I haven't seen the thing change. As a matter of fact, if anything, it's getting worse in the sense that uh, just months ago, uh, transcripts were released about from the Deutsche Bank suit in which they were rigging the silver market and had to pay a whole lot of money, I don't know, $100 million. And they, they showed how the, the bullion banks talking to each other and how they were going to rip people off and when they were going to attack. And while this has gone on, you've had, you know, major assaults on the silver market after this. I mean, we had it on March 2nd in which silver was dropped to 80 cents for no apparent reason uh, and just ridiculous. And we just even just... Uh, uh, the other day, we had a breakout in silver. It, it closed well after the Fed speak uh, and took off. Uh, people were quite surprised that gold and silver can move up with the Fed raising rates like that. It was a little panic coming in, and silver was getting ready to explode, and they, they took it right down, uh, even though gold went up $9 on the day. So I don't see any change. Uh, you've got a bunch of Goldman Sachs people in with President Trump. Um, they've been the... Way back, from way back in the very beginning, they were the, you know, one of the main cogs in the gold cartel. I mean, they come and go. It's not like J.P. Morgan, which is there all the time now in the silver market. 
But, you know, I'm hopeful that if anybody can change things, quite frankly, it's President Trump. Uh, just from a simplistic standpoint, you know how much he likes gold, all, the, all those buildings and stuff like that. And there's talk about him having Andrew Jackson's picture right at the central bankers in his office. And, and uh, the guy may want to change things and do it out of nowhere. So there is hope there more than any other president. But I want to see something versus just hope trading. Yeah, you brought that up, and people have been very active in commenting on that, whether Trump is actually an outsider in this regard. He talked about in his in his campaign about draining the swamp, et cetera, but they've pointed, a lot of people have pointed to the specific appointees that he has named to his economic positions in his administration and saying, how are you going to drain the swamp if you're basically putting the the old guard, the you know more of the same uh, would be expected if you're putting the old guard back in place again. Uh, what What's your view? about specific appointees and what would you consider evidence of a change going to happen? Well, first of all, I'd like to see the markets tell us that. In other words, and see the uh, the silver open interest is not far from the old all-time highs. And I'd like to see the bad guys get out, in other words, and, and not oppose a price rallies. There's one other, uh, you know, a person around him, uh, somebody named Judy Shelton, who's you know, very favorable towards gold and, and has some ideas that, uh, uh, you know, she's presented in a paper. And, you know, we hope that that, you know, may have some impact. And you don't know. And, you know, President Trump may come to realize he's got a real big, big problem with the, with the gold market. And if he doesn't get the, the scandal out of the way for what they've done, and, you know, do, does the U.S. have any gold reserves? Left, left or I'm sure we do, but how much of it, I don't know. I think it, they're diminished. And if, if the gold and silver markets are going to blow up at some point during his term and his Goldman Sachs advisors know what's coming, he may want to get ahead of that, want to do something to uh, alleviate that problem and maybe elevate the gold price somehow or, you know, do something that, that people aren't expecting so that, you know, he can get the sc a scandal behind him and maybe point to other uh, presidents for having done it and then you know, try to come up with a solution. and. I don't know if they reset the gold price, for example, he could say, well, it's not going up because of uh, his bad policies. It's going up because of some scandal or because they want to do something to tie it to uh, the financial system. And, and uh, uh, he, can, he can avoid a bullet on that one. You mentioned uh, gold reserves. Do you believe that it's likely that we will see an audit of the Fort Knox gold reserves uh, called by, by President Trump? And how, how possible do you even think it is if whether he does or not, if he were to call for an audit, that one can even be done? Well, it's a very good question. Uh, there were rumors a while ago that he called one and they denied, you know, that uh, that um, that there be one that he, he was denied. I have no idea whether that's true or not. Uh, if anybody is likely to call for an audit for the reasons I just mentioned, it would be President Trump. But it's, uh, it, uh, you know, you, you just never know. I mean, uh, what else? What hasn't been audited since 1955? I mean, it's a joke. And as my colleague Chris Powell says, the United States would rather reveal our nuclear secrets than our gold secrets. It's that big a deal. It's that big a story. So I can't imagine them allowing a, a legitimate audit that gets into the, you know, lease gold and stuff like that and gold swaps and what's the real story with U.S. gold reserves. But then again, President Trump's a different animal, and if anybody can do it, it's... <laughs> yes, uh, that's right. He, we've, we've learned to expect the unexpected uh, throughout the course of his campaign and, and early administration. Um, a lot of people have surmised that the reason you can imagine why we haven't had a forthcoming Fed audit or a gold audit, gold audit in specific here, is because there is no gold left. It's all been sold or leased or swapped away. Are there any other possibilities that, that you can think of strategically why, why our country has been so resistant or reluctant to, to be forthcoming about our gold reserves? No, quite frankly, it's that simple. Uh, a lot of the gold has been compromised. They're certainly part of it. And uh, it w as I mentioned, it'd be a huge scandal. And uh, they just don't want to go there. and They don't know how to get out of it right now. So they keep you know, making sure there's no audit. And uh, it's, as I said, it's ridiculous, but it just goes on and on and on. And, and uh, uh, one day, I'm sure that it's going to be exposed. And as I've said many times, it's going to be the biggest financial scandal in U.S. history. 
What do you think are some likely outcomes if, in fact, there is a revelation that there, we, we don't either have none or almost none uh, of the national gold reserves than, than what people were thinking before? Uh, what do you think are some, how would that play out? Well, I mean, first of all, the dollar would go into the tank, which uh, Trump may like because it certainly would not mind himself in one way, in the sense it would help uh, the job picture, which he's trying to, uh, you know, facilitate in, in what he's doing. But obviously the gold price would just go bananas. And uh, who knows, maybe the United States will have to declare a certain price of gold, pick a number, you know, 2,500, 3,500, and say, we'll buy, we'll buy gold at that price so that they can build the reserves back up. And they might do it surreptitiously and not tell people why they're doing it. But that's a possibility down the road. But again, that's, I put that in my hope trade category. People have talked about Trump favoring the possibility of a gold-backed currency. We've certainly had Ron Paul talking about that with federal chairmans for decades. Uh, do you see any indication that the Trump administration would consider or favor a gold-backed currency? Well, I'm not sure what all the details would be, but like I mentioned, if, if they came up with a reason for gold to go to a much higher price, for example, they can blame it on a technical issue and not because... You know, gold going up is, is bad, according to former Fed uh, Chairman Paul Volcker. Gold going down is good. That's part of the reason the gold cartel operates the way they do. They want gold in the tank, to, you know, to uh, not interfere with other issues regarding interest rates and dollar and so on. But if it went up for a declared reason, the, the barometer would be dysfunctional in that regard. So it wouldn't like it, it wouldn't mean that his policies are bad, for example. It would just right. well, here's you know, we, we want the gold price up here, you know, so, uh, and of course, our camp would love to see it. And, uh, you know, my friend James Turk has said that if gold had kept up with inflation, it would be $3,300 an ounce. That takes out all the other issues. So even if we go back to 3300 we're just getting gold to where it should be. And, and silver is truly a joke. Um, it, you know, it's it's not even at the a price it main, main got to in 1980 for, for whatever reason in fifty dollars or right. one third price. So I think when they lose control of silver, which I think is going to be at twenty one dollars an, uh, uh, an ounce, I think silver will go uh, will go bonkers. We have a viewer question. I'd like to to. Uh share with you to see if you can have uh, have a response that would help us out here. Uh, Flame Tangu uh, is the name of the viewer who, who submitted this. It says, who is really shorting the silver? According to the COT reports, banks are most likely long, not short. Why do we keep on hearing that those are the banks that are short? Well, it seems not to be true. Isn't it more logical that the one who needs physical would prefer the lower price? Maybe there's no manipulation in a way as we're being told to discourage silver stackers. Maybe those are just companies to hedge mining or producers that want cheaper physical. So can you talk to us a little bit about what we know about who is really shorting the silver and what their um, motivation would be? Well, you know, what, what God is going to say, because we've watched it, I trade, look, look at it on a daily basis all day long, and you can see what they're doing. The open interest is, you know, just a little below 190000 and aside from last year, the high, the high open interest was 192000 and it's the same people, and I disagree with your, or your, your questioner there, that it's J.P. Morgan, and it's the rest of the bullion bank, they're the ones basically shorting the market, and it's been this way forever. I ironically enough, when gold made its big move in 2011, the open interest was 100 and say 130,000 contracts all the way up. We're a little below 190,000 now. J.P. Morgan and the bullion bank stepped aside during that move up. They let it go, and there's many you know theoretical reasons why that happened, and that's too much to get into. But they're there all the time, and they're it's their kryptonite. They're petrified of losing control of the silver market because it's going to explode, and then gold's going to go with it, and then it's going to expose a lot of the things that they're doing. So the kind of action we've been seeing, you know, this year in the last five or six years, is it just, it's constant. 
in in most uh, simplistic understandings of uh, stock, you know, bash and stash or pump and dump, that sort of thing, people uh, who who try to manipulate or, or start a trend, either, you know, a sell-off avalanche or, or a buy-up momentum, they're trying to start momentum in one way or the other and try to hope that by their action, it will start a cascading effect to leverage that on the part of other buyers following suit. And then they'll be able to sweep in and either close out short positions at a, at a far lower price or close out long positions at a far higher price. Do you see any evidence of that kind of profitable trading as as a factor that's driving some of this manipulation? We keep hearing about how they're pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down, but is that just digging themselves deeper and deeper and deeper in a hole of greater and greater exposure, or do they in fact close out those positions at a profit? Oh, profit indeed. I mean, look what happened after the, the Trump win. Everyone said gold would go up and the stock market would go down. But the plunge protection team at Gold Cartel came in and went bananas. And they've created a scenario that's lasted until this day, you know, with the stock market going straight up. None of the mainstream people were bullish on the stock market if Trump won. I didn't hear one prior to the election. So they, they changed the whole perception by going into the futures market and driving the prices up. Uh, and it's, you know, on, go, ongoing to this day. And gold and silver was the opposite. And they got the, the open interest in both gold and silver collapsed, which means, you know, they were able to plunge the price down so much that the speculative longs and the people who are bullish all got out. Uh, and then that was in December, and then it rallied back up, and they're you know, in the process now of trying the same thing again. And so they've been making profits from the short side for, you know, you know, 18 years that I've been doing this, and it, the same thing happens over and over again. I'm looking for something different. I don't know if it will happen, but you want it where they just get out and then they don't oppose the rallies too much, or they do it in moderation according to whatever their new script is. And that's what we really want to see. And uh, uh, we, you never know when that's going to occur. In, in my opinion, they, they did what they did following the unexpected Trump win because they know they're going to have to inflate the system to save the system. And you're seeing that, of course, in, in uh, other asset prices. And at the time, they were still very short gold, so they bombed it. And again, they got the speculators out. And I was hoping that would be it, but no, they went, went at it again. So we just have to see how it's going to play out. So that's another aspect of the viewers' questions that focus on this idea of, do you see that these major bullion banks are short on paper, but are they accumulating physical so that they're positioning themselves for the long run that they would allow to happen later? Well, there's some, you know, talk about what J.P. Morgan's doing and their long physical position, which is, you know, a long, you know, a, a different subject. Um, yeah, that's that's it's possible in some ways that that could be done, being done. I don't know. I mean, uh, we just know about J.P. Morgan. But one of the things that's going to have should happen uh, if the, you know, the the Goldman Sachs types and the other bullion banks and the, the big people know what's coming, the gold silver shares will just take off. I mean, if they know the game's up, they will move into that sector ahead of time. You know, hopefully before anyone else. And maybe the latest takedown. Uh, was an attempt to shake people out so they could buy. These are all suppositions, and you just never know. Is it coming? Yeah, these markets are going to go nuts. But, you know, in the meantime, it's very tedious. Let me understand, just for the benefit of myself as well as our viewers, what you just said. Are you saying that a potential or possible early indicator of uh, an, a cessation of the manipulation that would signify an upcoming uh, run that was going to be allowed to, permitted to happen by the manipulators might be a increase in the gold and silver mining shares. When you said gold and silver shares, what were you referring to? Oh, I'm sorry, the mining shares. Yeah, that's number one. And then number two, to have them uh, not aggressively sell on the short side in the in the futures uh, arena, in the gold and the silver pits. In other words, all of a sudden the market's going up and they're not you're not getting short like they are right now. So those two things would tell us that the game's going to change. And, you know, you look for it and you hope for it, but it hasn't happened yet. 
There's a related question from Creation Man. We have a couple of viewers that have, that have submitted the question of this regard. And it has to do with what you're saying about the separation of physical and paper markets. Uh, Creation Man asks, people such as Andrew McGuire are stating that the physical market is starting to overtake the paper market, possibly in the next 90 days. When do you believe it will do so in enough quantity to end the manipulation, at least so prices rise to the previous highs of $1,900 gold and $50 silver? That separation of physical of demand, physical demand forcing the end game with separation from paper manipulation. Well, I call it the tipping point when they when the bad guys, this gold cartel, as I call it, we call it, uh, they can't come up come up with enough physical supply to uh, maintain the price suppression scheme. And all you can do is uh, is look for the market to tell you that. I mean, Andrew's got more contacts in London uh, with the physical market, and he's a really sharp guy. So again, that would be the hope trade here, but so far we're seeing no signs of it. I mean, it'll, and what it's probably gonna happen is, is it'll come out of nowhere. It'll be when people you know, are despairing and disgusted and talk like I am right now, and the next thing you know, it's just going to just take off. And that's, and you can't predict that. So uh, the, <laughs> the, um... Contrarian indicator is when Bill Murphy gets disgusted enough, it's a good, it's a good early, early warning signal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I talk, I was just at a Jeff Berwick conference, and the Bitcoin people were all excited, and the stock market people were all excited, and I said, you know, I'm disgusted, you know, and I was so happy for these other people because, you know, we all want to make money and 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 have fun and enjoy life, and it's, I'm enjoying life, but. I'm not enjoying talking about the gold and silver markets and watching the same drills over and over again. I want them to end. Well, Bill, is there any other aspect of your most recent research that you've been doing, new awarenesses or perspectives that you've got that we haven't asked you about that you'd like to share with our viewers? No, the only other thing was the WikiLeaks document that came out uh, uh, a little while ago, which showed that when the futures market was first set up, it was done to take demand away from the physical market, and it was a State Department uh, utterance out of London or to the State Department, and it was about exactly what God has been talking about all these years later, that they used the gold and market to, uh, you know, to, to, to take interest away from gold itself, and specifically by keeping the price down. So the only thing I can say, as I mentioned earlier, I think it's going to be an incredible financial scandal down the road and that uh, eventually people are gonna realize what has been done here. And uh, I can't stress enough how bullish the big picture is. And when this thing gets going, uh, and then especially silver, it's going to be breathtaking. And it's gonna be very hard for people to get on board based on what's happened all these past years if they're, if they're not there now. Uh, the legendary Murray Pollard of Toronto said in the 70s, people get, were getting tired a little bit like what I'm talking about. And then, of course, you had the, the biggest move in history back then. And he said so many people that were veterans in the gold and silver sector got out because they got so tired and they missed the move. And that's what could happen again, where after all these years, it's the momentum people that jump on board when, once it gets going because they don't mind paying up versus the other people will be waiting for the pullback that never comes. And I think that's a very important thing to keep in mind as we go through this tedious time of, of uh, gold and silver, you know, continuing to bottom. Just wanting to circle back with something you said to make sure that we're all on the same page about it. You mentioned about uh, WikiLeaks, a recent WikiLeaks revelation of what GATT has been claiming all along, that, that the directives are coming from the executive branch. Is it to divert public interest from gold and silver? And public interest meaning the attention uh, of the common people and potential momentum investors that, that, they don't, that the powers that be do not want uh, public sentiment and popular awareness to be that they act, that, that they really should be getting into positioning themselves strategically in physical assets. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I mean, they, they, they you know, we've had futures markets for forever in this country, and, and the, the State Department document, you know, shows that, uh, mentions exactly why they wanted to, to get the, the gold futures market going for this very reason. And it's and it's really is no surprise because look at what they did to the gold price and and fixing the price and and keeping it before you know things changed and and it's it's been this way in gold in the United States uh, you know forever I mean 
even back to when they confiscated it for crying out loud. So we know what they're doing, and you know they won't even they won't even talk about it in public. One of our uh, fellows, Ware Smith, was talking to had a question of Bill Dudley in Virginia uh, at a presentation about the gold swaps, and he he almost lost it on stage. He wouldn't answer the question, and it's that big a deal. And uh, the the best part from our camp standpoint is that they are going to reach this tipping point when they run out of enough physical gold and silver to con continue what they're doing. So it's not going to go on forever. It's just taking longer than we think because of all the financial innovation they've been able to come up with since 2011. And they've been brilliant at doing it, but it's going to run its course. When you And, and that's when that, that last question I have for you is when it runs its course, what do you think would be possible examples of reasons the game just couldn't keep going? Because you talked to us about uh, halfway through this interview about how they can make huge profits even the way they're doing it. So it isn't like it's all, you know, if, if, a, if a business wants to drive another business out of business for monopolistic pr pricing pressure for the long game, they may have to take short-term losses and losses and losses to undercut their own price, sell at a loss in order to, to drive out their competition and then finally reap the benefits way later. But you're saying that they're even profiting along the way here with the manipulation. So what would ever bring that to an end? Well, that's a good point, and that, I can't stress that enough. They've been they've been taking on the speculators and forcing them out. Even even in the twelve year bull market, they made money. They kept wiping the specs out, and then it would go up, and they wipe them out again. It's it's, it's been, you know, the same drill over and over again. That's what I keep talking about. They've made a fortune, and uh, I mean, just think of the fortune they made from the, from the highs in gold and silver in two thousand and eleven uh, to to where they went to. I mean. So they have made an absolute force, and the question is, will they be forced to get out of this game because of the physical market? That's what I'm talking about. In other words, they reach a tipping point in which the physical market seizes up on them, and they, they aren't able to do it anymore. And for whatever reason, as I mentioned in silver, in 2011, the open interest didn't go up the entire move. For whatever, they let it go for whatever their reasons were. Maybe they're getting ready for this bombing campaign that's lasted six years. So they know exactly what they're doing. It's extremely sophisticated, but they're going to reach the tipping point when they can't do it anymore, and the game will have to change. At least if they're going to do it again, it'll have to be for much, much higher levels. Well, Bill, we always appreciate you bringing your perspective and your wisdom and, frankly, your moral courage and conviction here. For You're one of the people that's out there, you know, tilting against the windmills of the power centers uh, on behalf of uh, fairness and of right and of, of, you know, proper ethics in, in the markets. And, we're, you know, you're one of our heroes. So just thank you so much again for sharing your insights with us here on Reluctant Preppers. Well, done again. I want to thank you and for all you're doing and uh, a great job. And that's the best thing apart what Chris Powell and I've done in our God efforts that we met so many great people and uh, it's made it a pleasure. Well, knowing, yeah, knowing that the fruits of your hard labor, because you get, you get a lot of uh, criticism, you get a lot of scoffing, you get, you get direct you know attacks and, and, and you get, but you get, you may get blacklisted where you can't even get an interview on, on a co commercial or corporate media. Uh, you can't get sometimes interviews with members of, of Congress or that sort of thing anymore because you're coming out on the you're on the politically incorrect side of this discussion. But knowing and you turn around that you've got thousands and thousands and thousands of individuals, sincere, hardworking, you know, honest individuals that have benefited from the insights and the awareness that you share has got to make I don't know some some gratification I hope uh, for for all the hard work that you put in. Oh, it, it does, and and uh, as I said, it's the people we've met, and and, and the knowing what's going on, and, and not going to go, having gone through life being clueless about something like this, the, the the lack of free press in America, it's just horrible. I mean, we fought the communists because they had no free markets, no free press, and they were oppressing people. Well, uh, Bloomberg is told uh, the, our gold the gold reporter Claudia Carpenter she is not allowed to mention God. And it's, this is this is the way it is all over the place, uh, and uh, it, it, that's just the way it is, and it's the life we have chosen, so we're used to it. <laughs> and you know, it's it's it. You will see, no doubt, that there'll be a avalanche of comments on this video. Uh, two thirds of them will be, "Thank goodness for Bill." Uh, part of them will say, 
uh, Bill always says the same thing, and and it's like a stopped watch or whatever. And then other people will say, oh, it's all just hoka. It's all just you know they'll be denying that there's this manipulation, that sort of thing. But the the main uh, response we've seen over and over from our viewers is a, you know appreciation for the awareness and. I guess you have to be a little bit sympathetic to people who say, gee, the message never changes. It's like, well, yeah, when you're stuck in that that doldrums or that holding pattern that's being engineered, that's been architected for that purpose, that can take a while. And it's difficult for anybody to say exactly when that's going to end. But the, that doesn't change that this is an opportunity when people can take strategic action to position themselves based on the reality of what's going on. So, I'd like to just finish up by saying that that's part of my whole point. These are artificially low prices. When these things are going to go bonkers, and it's because if you know what Ghana knows, you know what's coming, you know what they've done. It's probably the most important thing to understand in the in the gold silver markets. All these other issues, quite frankly, haven't meant a thing. What major thing has meant anything for gold and silver these past years? Nothing. It's because of the gold cartel. So the whole key for when it's going to explode is when they blow up. And uh, it's very exciting in that regard, and yeah, it's the same thing over and over again, although hopefully we brought a couple of new things to your listeners' attention. But, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it is what it is. And that's part of uh, the tagline of our channel is being aware and prepared. So by, be, by increasing people's awareness, we're hoping that they can be in better informed. And because if, if we all only had to rely on the information we can get on the corporate media, you know, heaven help us. So we've, we've got to reach out to people that are doing their own independent investigations as you do at gata.org. So thank you for the good work you continue to do. We'd love to have you back again, uh, you know, as soon as there's uh, any new insights gained and any new change to, the, to the, these early warning signals that you've talked to us about. So, Bill, thanks for coming on, and we'll have you back again. Thank you, Not again. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Take care.